very personal. Uh, <laughs> so I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask it. Uh, we all know that the media mm -hmm. are absolutely uh, determined yeah. to rubbish UKIP. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not just papers, newspapers, the BBC, almost mm -hmm. every, every media that you tune into uh, 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 take every opportunity mm -hmm. to rubbish us. And in some cases it's well deserved because I can't remember the woman's name, Janice, this redheaded woman down right say. at the start of UKIP. What has she done for the UKIP? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, and, and that sort of um, instance has gone on at top level, mm -hmm. unfortunately, for some long time. Oh. So I have to ask you, mm -hmm. and this is the question because it's a public meeting, yes. have you got any hidden problems in your past <laughs> which yeah. are going to come out because, mm -hmm. let's face it, the newspapers have got unlimited resources yeah. to, to delve into these things. Yeah. Now's the time to confess them and get them out of the way. Because no. frankly, we've had far too many mm -hmm. so-called leaders trying to uh, <coughs> uh, impose their, yeah. their, their policy on UKIP and, and indeed the rest of the country. And what do they end up as? They, they, they end up as a laughing stock, not only for themselves, but the whole of UKIP. Mm -hmm. And we don't want any more of that. Yep. Absolutely. So that's why I'm saying to you, I hope you have yes. yes. Absolutely. Uh, you know? You know, I'm, I'm really grateful for your candour and I really appreciate the opportunity to it's respond important. to that. It is incredibly important. In fact, uh, you know, I know things about other people who are in very senior positions um, that uh, are quite distressing to, to, to know about. And I mean, you, you don't know anything about me. You have graciously accepted me here on the basis of very limited information that you have about me. So I think that's an entirely fair question and I'm willing to be perfectly open with you about it. Okay, so um, the, the majority of what you will see directed against me from the media is very trivial. Okay, my, my own background is admittedly quite unusual in the sense that I came from a military family and so we, we travelled around quite a lot, you know. I, I attended 11 different schools in several different countries and so, you know, I've, I've, I've been in Britain, I've grown up in Britain, I've grown up in Africa, you know, I've, I've worked in Eastern Europe, I've worked in France and so, um, you know, th throughout the course of my um, kind of growing up, I suppose I've uh, been exposed to so many different kinds of cultures and value systems that um, um, I'm, I'm perhaps quite, quite difficult to um, categorise by mainstream media as you know, someone who comes from, let's say, South Wales, who, who, you know, who, who's quite, quite predictable. And so you know, I've, I have interests which some people may find quite unusual. Okay. Having been ex-military, I, I had an interest in weapons. Okay, and so um, I have a holiday home in Bulgaria and I, I do competitive shooting for sport. Now I know a lot of people in Britain don't have the opportunity to do that um, and so that may be regarded as slightly eccentric. Okay, but as far as I'm concerned it's a perfectly innocent pastime. Um, you know, I, I, I do competitive speed pistol shooting, so of course I have a Glock 17. Um, I do skeet shooting, so I have a Beretta 692, and I'm, I'm training to get my, um, my, my selective hunting license, which, which is for conservation purposes. So of course I have a Ticker T3 Tactical. Now the fact that I've got three weapons is described by these jokers in media as an arsenal. Okay. Um, now, I have... In, in, in my holiday home, I've got, a, I've got a well in my garden and because in that location the temperature drops to minus 30 degrees centigrade, um, the pump house is slightly subterranean. It's about three metres underground so that the, the water and the pump doesn't freeze in the winter. And the mainstream media call that a bunker. Okay, and um, in, in, in my village, there are many animals that just roam around fairly free, horses and donkeys and that kind of thing. Uh, and so we secure the external perimeter of our garden with a wall. And the mainstream media describes that as um, a secure compound. Okay, now I think, I think UKIP people know that the mainstream media um, has made a tremendous amount of capital in mocking us. But there's, there's a pattern 
when you start trying to change the system, one of the people who's been supporting me with social media, Steve Unwin, came up with this, um, this remark. It was something like, first they uh, ignore you, then they ridicule you, then they fight you, and then you win. Okay, so you will see things in mainstream media about me. There's this nonsense about me convincing somebody in IKEA to let me take my Glock 17 into the shop in case there was some terrorist attack. It's absolutely not what happened. I had the weapon with me because I was training and according to the Weapons and Ammunitions Act, you're not allowed to hand your weapon over to another person unless they are a registered armourer, you know, a gunsmith. So you can't just hand your weapon over to a sales assistant or to a member of security. And so I had a couple of things to get there. And um, the lady said, well, we don't allow weapons in the shop. And I said, OK, well, no problem. But I'm interested to know why not if the person has a license. And they said, well, if weapons come into the shop, we're worried that somebody may attack us. And so I said, well, surely if somebody attacks you, um, you would want law abiding people to be there to defend the people they are attacking. OK, so now, the, the thing is, mainstream media will not listen to what I think are perfectly sensible arguments. They'll cut you off and tell you you're weird or you're eccentric or you're extreme. And I totally agree with you. I'm yeah. interrupting you a bit because I don't not, not at all. have to go on too long. I but, appreciate but that. I was a, a general secretary of a trade union for some 20 years. And so I do know the sort of um, questions and, and, and response you get mm -hmm. from the media. But it's, um, it does occur to me, you might have a Bulgarian girlfriend or something. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> My, look, look, look. I, I, I have. I mean, no, no, no. <laughs> Do you know? Do you know? It's, I'm, you know, I'm glad, glad you mentioned that. And you know, at, at the risk of embarrassing her, I think if you could see what my wife looks like, you would know I've got absolutely no interest in no having chance. having a girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I do apologise yeah. for being so doing, but it yeah, is honestly, so important. I, I, I entirely respect what what you are doing, and Thank I agree you. it is important. Well, you've answered my question very much. Well, well there is one more thing that I should mention, mm -hmm. and I prefer to get these things out in the open mm -hmm. as early as possible, and I've endeavoured to do so in whatever limited means I, I can already. And mm -hmm. um, the only other thing that I, I know, well, sorry, there are two other things that I know they may want to attack me for. Owen Smith, when he gave his um, speech to the Labour Party conference, um, described me as a soldier of fortune, okay? Now, this, this was simply because I worked with the Ugandan People's Defence Force on a very small, uh, relatively um, safe operation in Western Uganda where I could see a very simple way of flushing out you know, a small number of sections of guerrilla terrorists who belonged to Intera Hamwe um, back in uh, the year 2000. And so I offered my services because I had experience um, working in an alpine environment to lead a platoon of soldiers there to flush out the terrorists. And it was very uneventful. It, the operation only lasted a week. I didn't get a penny in my pocket from it. They paid expenses, of course, and you know, put me up in a hotel and I went to meet with the president and that kind of thing. But it, I, I didn't make any financial gains from that. And the only final thing is in terms of the fact that um, my business interests are scattered um, abroad you know, throughout the world. I have um, a, a small number of properties in um, Bulgaria, um, you know, France, Tanzania, and in Tanzania, I have a business which has to be in Tanzania because it takes people up Mount Kilimanjaro, which happens to be the um, largest freestanding mountain in the world and the highest in Africa. And so because of that, um, I, I'm incorporated offshore and I bank offshore because unfortunately I've tried so hard to cooperate with British banks and I, I, I regret to say it because I'm, I'm extremely patriotic and I'm proud to be British, but the British banking system is falling far behind what international banks can offer. Mm, they're rubbish, aren't they? Uh, they, they, they are. I think you've answered my question. I'm grateful. <laughs> well, thank you.